Hello, everybody. So I'm Jean-Baptiste. I will talk uh, now not about uh, oxygen management, but about CO2 management. You will see that it will be linked with oxygen, but I will try to, to have a focus on, on CO2 because, uh, as you know, uh, CO2 is a very important gas in energy, as, uh, as oxygen is, and uh, it's important to, to manage it to, to be sure that uh, we have a, a consistent uh, level in our uh, bottle. So CO2 is very important because it has a direct effect on the sensory perception of a wine. Uh, if uh, CO2 is increasing in your wine, it will increase the freshness and so counterbalancing the, the sweetness of, of the, the same wine, but also increasing astringency perception and bitterness perception up to one gram per liter of CO2. Prickliness will uh, start increasing and then will be replaced, replaced by effervescence, okay, when the saturation is uh, reached. So due to that, it's very important to, to, to manage it, uh, especially because uh, sensory perception and effect is direct. We directly taste the CO2, which is not the case with oxygen. Oxygen has to react with wine to lead to some senso sensory changes. But here with CO2, it's not, the, it's not the case. So it's important to measure CO2 as it's important to measure oxygen. And on the market, there is not a lot of uh, different uh, tools to use. So the, I would say the most common one is carbodozer. I don't know if you use it because it's cheap and very easy to use. So you put uh, 100 milliliter of wine in, in a flask, you shake it, and then the CO2 will come in the headspace, creating an overpressure. So the, some volume of wine will escape the, the flask, and then due to the diminution of, the, of this volume, you can have uh, the related uh, CO2 content. Problem of that, according to, uh, Depending on the, the operator is using it, you can have a very big variation of measurement. So it's not very accurate. Another tool is the Carbo QC from uh, Anton Parr. So it's based on a physical uh, method too. So the wine will be entrapped in the chamber and the device will increase the volume of this chamber, increasing that. CO2 will go from the wine into the, into the headspace, but not only CO2, other gas too, as uh, nitrogen and, and oxygen. So the device will do different uh, volume expansion to be more accurate in, to, to determine the CO2 content. Problem of this device, so it's accurate, but it's, it's expensive and difficult to, to, to maintain and to have a good calibration of it uh, over time. And the last one I present, it's uh, the Orbiser CO2 probe. Okay, so you have a picture here. So uh, the principle is uh, thermal conductivity because CO2 has a very much lower thermal conductivity than oxygen and nitrogen, so trust me. <laughs> so at the end, the, the wine will go through the, the probe. There is a membrane here. So the gases will go in the, into the probe and then there will be a, a measurement of the thermal conductivity of the mix of the wine, and so determine, uh, determine uh, how much CO2 there is in, in the sample. So looking at that, we can say that the industry is still uh, uh, after an affordable uh, method to have an accurate measurement of CO2 in an easy setup, and we hope so that uh, some uh, industrial partner or industry will develop a much more better uh, CO2 device. So um, because it's difficult to measure CO2, there is almost no data on the literature to, uh, to see the evolution of CO2 due to process uh, steps in winemaking, like uh, pumping uh, or filtration, etc. 
And so here, um, I will try to explain how I did the relationship between the increase of oxygen during uh, a treatment and the corresponding decrease of CO2. So for that, I use the Dalton law, so which says that the total pressure of the gas into the liquid will stay equal and is the sum of the partial pressure of each uh, gas. So here, I consider only this, uh, this three one. So we could put argon if we want to, uh, to use uh, argon with, uh, with some treatment. And this sum will be equal at the beginning and at the end of the treatment, okay? If we have a, a process step as a filtration, if we have no protection with the wine, so the wine will be in contact with air, and so we, we will be able to measure an increase of the oxygen content into the, into the, into the wine. And this increase of oxygen, so it's a P prime O2, uh, what we measure after, uh, minus what we measure before. So this pickup is depending on the gradient you have between your wine, so the, still the PO2, and you, what you have in your gas. So here I used air, okay? And this ratio will be the same for each other gases. So from that, knowing that, because we are able to measure that, we can predict what, what are the loss of CO2 due to uh, an increase of oxygen into your, uh, in, into, in your wine. So if we take, the, for example, a, a bottling, because today we are talking about bottling, Normally, during a, pot, a bottling step, and uh, sure, Steph will come back on that uh, later, you have a U-curve, okay? So the pickup of oxygen in your wine during the process is not the same. So you have a beginning and end effect of your process. And we can, due to the model I presented just uh, before, you can uh, calculate due to this uh, increase of oxygen the corresponding loss of CO2, and you will have this kind of graph. So here in this study, it was a, a Chardonnay in Burgundy, so I consider the Chardonnay in Burgundy was uh, at uh, 800 milligram per liter of CO2 at bottling, so I would say some common. And due to this ingress of oxygen, you see, you, we can calculate and modelize the loss, uh, not the loss here, but the content of CO2 in the bottle along the process. And at the middle of the process, the loss are not so big. It's around 50 milligrams per liter, so still okay, I would say. And today, it's, uh, it's the accuracy of the, of the device I presented before, so something you can just measure. But the beginning and the end, you can have big drop uh, up to 200 milligram per liter, so I think we have no a study today um, what is the sensory threshold of CO2 in, your, in the wine. So if this uh, 200 milligram per liter will make a difference when you taste the wine, but we can, we can assume that. And the, uh, the other remaining question is, okay, can we, by measuring uh, some uh, bottle in our winery, validate this, uh, this model I just presented to you? So, still some question. So now I will try to focus a little bit about the, the U-curve, especially beginning and end. So here it's some data from, uh, in France, from Vidal and Earl in 2004, so it's some published uh, data with different type of uh, effect of practices at the beginning of the bottling on the oxygen pickup in your wine. So here I consider inerting of the, of the tubes, okay, at the beginning, and the, I put rinsing, so maybe it's priming in English, I'm not so sure, but okay, when you, when you say rinse, rinse your, your system with some wine at the beginning, and you put back the wine in your, in your tank often, okay. So without having these, uh, these practices, 
this is the first 500 bottles in your, uh, of your bottling will have a bigger uh, and higher oxygen pickup com in, comp in comparison with what you can have at the middle of the bottling, okay? So the delta is 2.2 milligram per liter. And this 2.2 can create a differences due to my model of 200 milligram per liter. So it was already the case right uh, after, right before, sorry. These uh, first 500 bottles, of course, will depend of your system. So if you have a big line with a, uh, a big volt volume of your system, the number here will be higher and the other thing in the other way, okay? By priming your system at the beginning, you can reduce a little bit the oxygen pickup in your first bottles, okay? And the difference here in this study was one ppm, so you can already decrease the CO2 loss you can have on your wine. And if you inert your, your pipes, you can decrease, of, of course, the uh, oxygen pickup. But here I put a, a question mark because according to the gas you use, the CO2 loss will be different because if you use nitrogen to avoid the uh, oxygen pickup, because it's still nitrogen, there is no CO2. So the loss of CO2 normally, be, normally will be the same. And so here, it's important, I will show late, later, how to you choose the right uh, mix of CO2 in your, in your gas to, to inert. So what we recommend to, to inert at the beginning is to reach 2% of oxygen in your, uh, in your pipes when you, when, you, when you inert. So here it's a measurement, a monitoring we did with uh, the NOMASense. Why we recommend 2% of oxygen? Because 2% of, of oxygen corresponds to a max of one milligram per liter of your wine. Is that if you, so if you saturate your wine with air, okay, so 21% of oxygen, saturation is around nine uh, ppm. So if you have uh, 10, 10 times less oxygen in your, in your mix, the max of saturation will be uh, 0.9, one ppm, okay, so depending on the temperature of your wine. So if during a transfer, if uh, the wine is in contact with air, you never reach the saturation of oxygen in your wine. Okay, during a, a filtration, you have an increase of oxygen, but it's not nine milligram per, per liter. So if the pickup is one milligram per liter with uh, no inerting, if you inert with 2% oxygen, the wine will be 10 times less. So open one milligram per liter. So already your pickup is almost neglectable. At the end of bottling is the same uh, story, I would say. So if there is no, if the tank is not maintained under uh, inert gas, and you flush your, your system at the end with air, okay, comprimed air, the pickup of oxygen on the last bottle will be higher than in the middle of your bottling, it's still the U-curve. Eh? The delta in the, this published data was around 1.7 milligram per liter, corresponding to a loss of uh, 170 milligram per liter of, of CO2. And if you use gas to inert the tank, for example, nitrogen, you can have a, a, even a decrease of oxygen in your wine because uh, nitrogen will remove some oxygen of your wine, so you have a decrease. You still have oxygen in your wine in the last bottle, but less than in the middle. Okay, so you have a negative delta, but still a loss of CO2 according to the gas you, you, you will use. To talk about a little bit about cost, if you maintain your uh, tank under needed gas in a closed tank, so only the gas able to enter in your, in your tank is uh, inert gas. At the end, one liter of wine will be replaced by one liter of gas. So according to the price of your gas, so 
you, 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 can, you can know you, the cost of this practice. And in average, in Europe, I don't know in here the, the cost, but the average cost is one euro per hectoliter, so a little bit more than one dollar per hectoliter, so still acceptable. In the middle of the bottling, uh, if you want to uh, decrease the oxygen pickup, you still can inert the empty bottles. Uh, the bottle is not empty, it's full of air, okay? So it's empty because there is no wine, but there is air. So if you replace this air by an inert gas, you can decrease the oxygen pickup, but you can have some loss of CO2 again. And here, if with air you have a pickup, an average pickup for one milligram per liter of oxygen, in, it can lead, uh, it corresponds due to the model I presented before, to a loss of 10% of your level of CO2 in your wine. So if, it, if your wine was uh, at one gram per liter, it's 100 milligram per liter of CO2 loss. So it's important to choose the right gas and in the mix of the gas, you, you need CO2. And so here I, I present, I would say, uh, a graph to, to try to, to choose it. So for example, if you bottle of wine with one gram per liter of CO2 and you want to keep it, if the wine is, I would say, at 10 degrees, you have to have in your mix around 50% of CO2. Okay, and if your, your wine is higher, 20 degrees Celsius, maybe you're more comfortable with Fahrenheit, so it's around uh, 70 Fahrenheit. Okay, the, the mix of CO2 has to be around 70. Okay, but of course, if you use already 50, the gradient will be lower than, ze than with zero, so the loss of CO2 will be lower can give some guidelines to try to use uh, the best uh, the best mix of gas mix of gas you can you can use okay so after our talking about co2 during uh, transfer of the wine and and filling the bottle we try to see how the headspace management can impact the co2 into the, into the wine, into the bottle. So here's still a little bit of theory. Okay, if we consider after bottling that the bottle is a closed system, so there is no exchange with, uh, with the closure or the cap, okay, we can uh, apply the mass conserv conservation law. So um, at the end, the mass of CO2 right after bottling and uh, when the the gas pressure will be equilibrated between what you have in your wine and what you will have in your headspace. Okay? Here is that you have, what you have in your wine or, uh, right after bottling, okay? So uh, the concentration of CO2 multiplied by the volume, okay? It's what you have in your headspace, so it could be zero. If you don't use any CO2 to inert your, your headspace, it can be zero. If you use CO2, it can be 100%, okay? So that's the mass of CO2 you have in your headspace. And here it's the same, okay, but here you have H C prime because at the end the C prime is the same for both because it's the gas pressure are equilibrated between the headspace and the gas, okay? So knowing that and that, we can calculate it, the, how much CO2 you will keep in your wine right after bottling. So more practically, if you use vacuum under your closure with a one gram per liter of CO2 in your wine right after bottling, you will have a negligible loss of CO2. And if you use CO2 so with a vacuum, so without any overpressure or with overpressure of CO2, the, the gain is not huge too. So, and the same for screw cap, even if the volume of the space is is higher here, the loss are not very big. So we can say that at the end, the headspace treatment, which can have a big impact in terms of uh, oxygen management, has a very low impact in terms of CO2 management. So it's really the, 
the conclusion we can we have to keep here. And then the last part will be the, the CO2 loss you can have through your, your closure, because of course before the bottle was considered as a closed system, but it's not. Because as you can have oxygen transmission rate through the, the closure, you will have CO2 transfer rate going from the bottle to, to, to outside. Okay. And here, because uh, we are, uh, I am from Nomacoc and we know very well the Nomacoc products in terms of uh, OTR and CO2TR, we know that the COTR of a, non, of a Nomacoc closure is four times higher than the OTR. Okay, so knowing that, we can modelize the loss of CO2 you will have over time in, in, your, in your wine, in your bottled wine. Okay, so here it's an example. Temperature is a key factor. Why? Because the uh, temperature influencing the CO2 solubility of your wine. So if your wine is uh, colder, the solubility will be higher. And so the pressure of CO2 and in your bottle will be lower. So the escape will be lower too. So here I took uh, two different uh, OTR and with two different uh, temperature of storage, okay? And you can see the loss of CO2 you will have in your bottle. So if at bottling you were around one gram per liter, the loss are very low over time and you need to wait almost two years to have a, a loss of 100, maximum 100 milligram per liter if you, in your wine, which is, I would say today, what we can measure and we don't know if there is an impact of the sensor. We did some trial uh, in the past, a closure trial, when we manage uh, OTR, but we measure CO2 too. And uh, here it's an example in France on a, on a Muscadet wine bottle at uh, 1.2 gram per liter of CO2 stored at 12 degrees Celsius with different kind of closure. So there is a three nomacoc closure with three different OTR, so three different COTR and a natural cork, a microaglow, and a one plus one. Okay, the monitoring was uh, over two years. And starting here, of course, the curves are, are not very nice because uh, of the measurement of CO2, you can have a lot of fluctuation. Is the horizon one is not very, it's very, I don't know the name. One thing, okay. So here at the end, over two years, uh, you, you have some loss of CO2. But the loss are around 100 milligram per liter for all the three closures because the OTR, the OTR are not so different to create big difference in two years in, in terms of, uh, of CO2. But you can see with some other closure, you can have bigger drop according to, we don't know. So for example, here the one plus one behave well until, uh, until uh, one and a half years, and then you have a suddenly a drop. So maybe it's bottle to bottle variation, but maybe it's a problem of uh, performance of the of the closure. Or we don't know. And another uh, uh, trial done in Germany on a whistling, so almost the same quantity of CO2, same temperature storage, different type, different type of closure. So here uh, a screw cap, a select one dot from Novacoc, and not two natural coke, high grade and mid grade, microaglo and an other extruded uh, synthetic closure. Here you can see, so 17 screw cap is considered as a very tight uh, closure, uh, cap, in the end it's not a closure, but. And you can see that it's the same for CO2. Huh? You have a kind of increase, but at the end it's just a, a problem of, uh, of measurement. So. At the end, this, uh, this crew cap with all maintain very low ingress of oxygen, maintain also a very low loss of CO2. Here you have a uh, select 100 and uh, the high grade uh, natural core, behave almost the same. Microaglo, it's not very, very different. And here you have a big drop with an extruded uh, cork which add an higher OTR than the other closure. 
And the natural migrate, so we don't know exactly OTR, but the behavior was very bad too. And here, from 1.3 to 0.9, 0.8, you will taste the difference for sure. And it's very important to, to, to manage it. So to conclude, as I try to explain, huh, CO2 is very important and is as much as difficult, uh, uh, as difficult as oxygen to manage in the cellar. Why? Because there is no very efficient tool to, to measure at the, at the line. And the CO2 mismanagement at bottling can be, can create also bottle to bottle variation in addition with oxygen mismanagement. So as I, as I explained, more you will have oxygen, normally more the loss of CO2 will be. And temperature or closer performance are also key to, to, to keep CO2 in the bottle. So thanks for your attention. And I don't know if we keep questions for after. Or...